uh, thank you for that welcome. And um, I have to say it's an absolute and very genuine privilege to be here um, with you today. It's, I found it very humbling listening to those people that we've heard from so far. Um, and I'm sure it'll be the case for this afternoon. I think when we look at you know, the, the patterns, if you will, across all of the things that have been said, it's not so much the science and the innovation and the technology that strikes me, it's the human innovation. That's the constant. And the, the question that in some respects I'm posing is how do we ensure that that human ingenuity is propelled forward? Because for all of the brilliance in the room, if we can't create something that is captivating and grabs attention and is compelling, then it's simply not going to resonate and investment falls flat. So what I've been asked to do today is just to talk to you um, for a few moments uh, about the sorts of steps that I think organizations need to think about as they bring their own imagination to life. Because the reality is, if we're going to create a mindset shift in medicine, then my view is we need, you know, we're asking people to have a different relationship with medicine and, and we really need to think about, so how do we have a different relationship with them? So let me just talk you through what I think some of the changes are that we need to think about if we're going to take, make, make these technologies um, live. The first relates to research, as all of you know. You know if you are going to um, engage with audiences, and let's face it, in medicine, there's a myriad of audiences. If you're going to engage with them effectively, you need to understand what it is that they think, what their behaviors are, their beliefs, and their motivations. And classic research tends to fall in the sort of traditional camp of we'll do desktop research, we'll do focus groups, qual and quant, we'll do polling, surveys, etc. But what we're focusing on is people's sentiment towards conditions. And that information could be interesting, but the reality is, is that information tends to be fixed in a moment of time because we're all influenced by what we heard earlier today, what we read yesterday, what we saw over the course of the weekend. So I'm less convinced that the sorts of research that's so often undertaken in understanding audiences and how we engage with them is as effective as it could be, simply because it's, it's focusing on sentiment. Instead, I think we really need to be looking at values, core motivations and belief that are entrenched within the way in which people think. We've heard some of those issues today. We've just talked about the past 60 years. What is it that actually entrenches ideas and views? And that's important because whether you're talking about mindset changes in medicine or any other category, the reality is, is that you're talking to people with a whole raft of different views on different issues. Systems thinking, when it comes to engaging with people, is applicable here simply because we all have interconnected views. And understanding what those views are is about establishing an understanding of people's values. Values don't, values don't just sit in a box. I'm going to do that. Values don't just sit in this sort of box or category. They're very much inter intertwined and interwoven. OK, now I'm doing a balancing act for you. Let's try this. Uh, the final point on this is, is about cultural cues. And I need to understand when we're doing research what the, is that OK? Yeah. What the cultural cues are. Let me just do this. I'm sorry. OK. Um, what I mean by cultural cues, these are the things that are happening around us every single day. And this, in some way, point, is a case in point. I'm seeing there's quite a lot of pink in the room at the moment. And the, the, the reason here, as clumsy it may, may seem, is that, you know, who'd have thought that Oppenheimer and Barbie, quite frankly, could be sort of projected as this concept of two movies you have to see at the same time, or back to back? The, 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 the way in which the movie industry is now beginning to collaborate, and we've seen evidence in this in these two interesting films, is, I think, evidence of the way in which we need to think about how we work together. So often, historically, we've talked about 
competition and fierce competition. The way forward, particularly in this sort of category, is the way in which organizations work together. Collaboration, fierce collaboration, is key. Um, I've been on the board with Cure Cancer Australia for nearly a decade, um, historically, and you know, that's an organization that provides seed funding to young researchers. And the best ideas of those young researchers are not singular, they're based on when they connect with other ideas as well. We did some work in climate at the tail end of last year with an organization called the Climate Leaders Coalition. That's what 25 of Australia's largest organizations came together to look at a number of project cases around scope three emission control. Now, when you bring all of these organizations together to work out you know, how do we manage, minimize, control um, scope three emission, you're really asking them to give up an awful lot of data. But it happened and it worked and the first mover status that those organizations um, had was significant. So that when we're thinking about mindset shift and engagement, we need to begin to think differently about how we work together. In many respects, I think what you have here, what we have here today, is an example of what that sort of collective thought process, sharing of ideas actually means and what it can be the catalyst for as well. When it comes to medicine, it's in our interest to think about projecting beyond medicine in the way in which we look at um, finding solutions. Third point for you is about intelligent ideas to accessible insights. Here's the reality. You're dealing with science and technology and there is a tension point between that and the market engaging with it. It's complex. It's detailed. It can be confusing to people. So what steps do you need to do to take to take these brilliant ideas and actually make them real for people? And I'm not just talking about channels of communication. I'm talking very much about the way in which people understand concepts and importantly, they understand what it means for them. That is the task when it comes to engagement, creating cause for people to understand as to what the consequences are of them to engage with you in the first place. Some of the things I've heard today um, have tended to focus on narrative and storytelling. And I'll talk in a moment about storytelling, but narrative is, is interesting. There's a sort of fixation on what do we need to say to be able to articulate our place in the market so that HCPs or consumers or government regulators, policy advisors truly connect with what it is that I'm doing. But I'm of the view that as we move forward, we really need to be thinking more deeply about how we tell these stories, the, the tone, the way in which it is that we engage people at an emotive level. And that's what this challenge is, this constant challenge between science and emotion, if you will. How do we create that bridge between the two? There was a, it was a fairly well-known study by a guy called Albert Morabian about 40 plus years ago who looked at attitudes and feelings um, when it came to communication. And in his view, he identified that words versus tone versus body language, words only have a 7% impact. Tone is 38%, body language is 55 That is the way in which we relate to how people and brands connect with us. So think about that imbalance. If so much of our focus and engagement is about the words we're speaking, then we're kind of missing the opportunity to think about how do we engage around tone. The thing I think is perhaps most interesting about stories, and I've seen evidence of it today, is that, and I tell you this or share this because I want you to think about how you tell these stories more effectively. All stories, we'll say about 98%, there's no such thing as all. The majority of stories are made up of five key themes. They are conflict, human impact, scale, risk or jeopardy, and future. And we've talked all about, about those five things today. In, everyone's talked about them in some way of point. Conflict is not about war, it's about different points of opinion. So if you're telling your story, 
be very clear as to why you have a particular opinion and why it might be um, different to others. Uh, when it comes to human impact, well, so much of what we're talking about today is human impact, but the story component of that relates to what it might mean for me. How would I deal with that situation? Scale is some of these numbers that we've heard today, big, small, wide, you know, 10%, 20%, whatever it might be. Jeopardy and risk is super important when it comes to mindset shift. Because I think if we're able to tell a story about risk, not threat, but risk in a way that people relate to it, then it creates a compelling reason to engage. And the final point on storytelling is the simple fact that we are all hardwired and fascinated to want to know what happens next. This idea of the future. So if you can engage with people around these projects, these investments that you're making, and talk articulately about how they uh, will change the future, you're gonna have an audience. Final point is this. It's not a pregnant pause and a passionate delay, is this. From business to brands. Um, the journey that many of those folks that we've heard about from today is one that follows a similar trait. It's an idea, it's an investment, it's innovation, it's commercialization, it's a successful business, but it's not necessarily brand. Brands create tenure. So as you're building and investing and collaborating with these organizations that we're hearing from today, the 23, think about what steps they need to take to become a brand. Because what we all want is for all of these organizations to still be alive and thriving in 23 years' time, every single one of them. And I believe that if they have brand equity, brand value, people understand what they mean, have loyalty to them, they're going to provide a far more compelling proposition than just simply a beer business. So, I leave you with this thought. This concept of changing or, or rethinking our relationship with medicine very much requires a rethink in the way in which we engage with all of our audiences. This is a journey that is not just about technology, it's a journey about emotion as well. Some of you may have seen this, this is nearly 20 years ago now that on the Democratic National Conventions, Mayor Angelo said this, I've learned that people will forget what you said, they will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you make them feel. And the work that so many of these 23 are talking about is about creating an emotional connection, not just simply shining brilliance at people. Thank you.